I know it should be embarrassed, but I'm fascinated by Meghan Markle. There you go. Because uh, to me, it's... It's just like a study in modern narcissism, very much a, a woman of the of the times. And she's finally re-emerged now to walk the red carpet of Variety's 2023 Power of Women dinner. Stunning, we were told, except, of course, she hogged the red carpet for so long, posing for the paparazzi, that an assistant had to try to move her along so the next people could have a go. But she just would not take a hint and brushed her away with a tight, bright smile. I mean... This is a woman who never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Joining me is Esther Cracker, writer, broadcaster, TV presenter, pundit. Is there anything she can't do? Um, Esther, thank you so much for your time. Look, I know you probably don't share my fascination with uh, Meghan Markle. What do you make of all this? I do actually share your fascination with her because I, I, I'm very curious how her worldwide privacy tour is going um, while she's posing in front of the cameras at a Hollywood event. Um, <laughs> Meghan Markle is a bit of an enigma because she and her husband have always said that they wanted to be private citizens, that she's passionate about charity work and, and giving back. But now we hear that she's get gearing up to do some more produce, uh, produ producing work and putting out content, which is in stark contrast to actually, you know, her humanitarian work that she said she was passionate about doing with the royal family. Um, the fear is that she's going to put out work that's as preachy and sanctimonious as her and her husband. She's probably going to talk about climate change while she hops around um, to Katy Perry concerts in a private mm -hmm. jet. Uh, she is an enigma in the sense that she's a walking contradiction. Um, but it's very fascinating to watch because she and her husband lead the most ridiculous lives I think uh, I've ever seen personally. And it's, it's, it's a shame that they're attached to the royal family in this way. Yeah, uh, it's a sign of how far she's fallen that she's actually got to fight for time on the red carpet <laughs> and avoid getting moved along. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Esther, more seriously, um, there's an ugly cultural difference, I think, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, between the pro-Palestinian protests and the pro-Israel ones, regardless of the cause back at, uh, you know, at, at, in the war ground. Um, here is the latest pro-Palestinian protest here, uh, just this afternoon outside the office of the New South Wales Premier. Now, but the ones, the pro Palestinian protests in Britain, I think, are actually far more intimidating. This one is in front of the office of your Labour leader, Keir Starmer, Starmer, and this is what happened when prominent Conservative MP Michael Gove was dropped off near the Victorian station to catch a train, was spotted by pro Palestinian protesters, forcing police to protect him. Have a look. Esther, what is going on? Why are those protests so much more aggressive than the Jewish, uh, the pro-Israel ones? Well, it's because, unfortunately, the pro-Palestinian protests have become a coalition between uh, those who are genuinely concerned about the plight of the Palestinians and those who are just anti-Semitic and malicious and hateful and have no problem screaming uh, hateful things on the streets of our capital. And, and it's really deeply unfortunate. I mean, if you look at the sort of pro-Israeli protests, they, they're, more, they're more like vigils. You know, this is a, a nation that's been traumatized by the events of October the 7th, and they really just want to see peace in the region, however way people disagree on how to achieve that. But you have pro-Palestinian marches that are intimidating MPs. You know, we had basically a conscience vote uh, in, in the, the Commons last week where they asked for a ceasefire, which obviously has no bearing on what the Israeli government chooses to do. It was just a symbolic vote. But you had people harassing MPs to the extent that have MPs actually abstained from voting um, f to, to have their views on the matter uh, showed in one way or another. And, and it's really deeply unfortunate and concerning. Um, wow. I mentioned last week that Greta Thunberg's, um, you know, congregation of the mentally unwell, where she talked about no climate justice on occupied land. <laughs> <laughs> and you're seeing you're seeing elements of that ignorance and and it, to to a larger extent genu genuine uh, malicious behaviour uh, on uh, a lot of pro-Palestinian protests and it's so it's so sad that London has effectively become the capital of uh, anti-Israeli sentiment. I know it's just uh, you know a vast demographic experiment that doesn't seem to be going too well because uh, it's the left also there I know but gee how you it's a, for, it's a sign uh, of force on the streets that I think would intimidate a lot of politicians, wouldn't it? 
absolutely and i think this is what what this has become a reality check for the country you know people are saying there's been a rise in, in hate and anti-semitism there hasn't been a rise they're just people that are feeling emboldened enough to to display their views and it's kind of shaken britain to the core because it's made us realize actually we're living in a country yes. with people that do not share our values that hate this country and and it's 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 a massive reality check obviously the police has been uh, not as helpful as they could have been they've been seemingly quite biased and how they manage um certain protests um over others I know. Um, but really this 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 is a huge wake-up call for the country it's true it's so true it's the thank you so much for your time